Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 313. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, you're going to learn a simple way to overcome limiting beliefs about money. But first, this episode is brought to you by Audible. It's the way I read more books and stay ahead of the curve. Audible is, of course, the easiest way to read books because all you have to do is just listen, like you are right now. There are over 150,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player, and your first audiobook is free. Just visit audibletrial.com forward slash be wealthy and smart. That's audibletrial.com forward slash be wealthy and smart. If you're a new listener, please hit the subscribe button so you get all the shows as soon as they're updated. All right, now to talk about limiting beliefs about money. One of the ways we get limiting beliefs is through really good intentions. I mean, our well-intentioned parents are trying hard to communicate with their children about money. If you're a parent, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Sometimes we as parents or our parents who raised us forget that the perspective may not serve the children long term. And I'm going to talk to us as children now, not as parents. So I'm going to flip it a little bit. If you're a parent, I'm going to flip it to when you were a child and when you were being raised by your parents. I remember one time I was invited to go on a swim team weekend to Florida. Swimming was my life growing up. I was swim team captain my senior year. I swam two workouts a day during the school year, before school and after school. It was my life. I was so into swimming. So when we were invited to go to Florida for a swimming weekend and have races and things down there, I was so excited. And I remember I asked my parents if I could go. And it involved a a flight from Seattle to Florida. I don't remember exactly what city in Florida it was in, but it was somewhere in Florida two nights hotel, you know, money for meals, transfers, miscellaneous, you know, all of that kind of typical budget for a couple of days. And when I asked my mom, I thought I was going to go because everybody was going. But my mom wouldn't let me go because she thought it was too expensive for a short trip. You know, I was the youngest of five children. We had two in college at the same time. I can see now what she was thinking. But For me, it was just devastating. It was heartbreaking. And it was embarrassing even to me because I felt like everybody else was going and I couldn't go. And it was really hard to understand. When you're 16, it is hard sometimes to understand why parents make the decisions that they do. But, you know, again, as an adult now, I totally understand. But at the time, all I knew is I was left out. I had to tell them I couldn't go. I was so disappointed. I just really internalized it. And I I really felt less than. And, you know, today, we're going to talk about things that our parents say to us or do because they have an idea in mind, or they have something that's going on in their life that is causing them to make decisions in our life about money. But sometimes those things go right into our subconscious and become a block or a limiting belief about money. So that's what we're talking about today is really how those good intentions that our parents had sometimes get internalized and then become limiting beliefs in our subconscious. So I want you to think back when you were a child. And if you're in a room where you can close your eyes and think about this, even better. If you're driving the car or walking or working out, I get that you can't close your eyes right now and think about this. But maybe right before you go to sleep tonight, you could give it a little bit more thought with your eyes shut. But if you can right now, just close your eyes and think back to when you were a child and something came up about money with your parents. Maybe you wanted to do something or maybe you wanted something for Christmas or Hanukkah and 
you didn't get it. Or maybe, you know, you were told certain phrases over and over again. Because there's lots of common phrases that parents say, and sometimes they just want to shut down the conversation about money. They're not trying to give us a life lesson about money. They're just trying to say, hey, don't be always bugging me about money because it's not always that prevalent in our life, perhaps. So what are some of the phrases you might have heard your parents say about money quite often? Did you hear them say, we can't afford it? Was that a common phrase you heard? We can't afford it. You can't do this because we can't afford it. Maybe that was an easy way for them to give you an answer and try and shut down whatever your requests were, but that might have just been internalized by you, that we can't afford it like other people can, but we can't. So therefore, we're not as good, or there's a problem, or who knows what else. But was that one of the things that you heard often from your parents? Maybe you heard money doesn't grow on trees. Hey, don't ask me for more money. You know, money doesn't grow on trees. <laughs> As if to let us know they work hard for their money and they don't always have an unlimited amount of money. But they would say money doesn't grow on trees as a way to sort of close that conversation. Or maybe you heard the phrase, I'm not made of money. Do you think I'm made of money? What do you think? I'm made of money? I'm not made of money. <laughs> Those kinds of phrases where our parents are saying, hey, it's not who I am. It's not me. It's not something I have an unlimited source of. So again, trying to shut down the conversation. Or you might have heard them say something like, hey, we're not rich. Like those people are rich, but we're not rich. You might have heard that. And that might have made you feel different from the rich. It might have made you feel like they're good or they're bad. Either way, maybe that's not a good thing. So you can see how you could internalize these things, these really innocuous things that our parents say about money with good intention and with, you know, trying to teach us or trying to let us know that Money is something that they don't have an unlimited supply of. It's something they work hard for. It's something that they think long and hard before they make a decision to spend it on something, and they don't do it frivolously. But they don't say that. But that's what they're trying to say in these little phrases. And so you might have heard these, or you might have heard some other negative money phrase. Maybe you're remembering what that money phrase is. So I want you just to think about that. Think about the perspective of your parents. What were they thinking when they said that phrase? How did you feel when you heard that phrase? And then I want you to turn it around and maybe write it down in your wealth journal and turn around what that phrase is really about and forgive your parents for saying those things and let them know that you understand they were communicating to you that money is something that is earned. It's something that you work hard for. It's something that has value and is not love. It's not something other than a means to buy something. But maybe that got somehow miscommunicated. So I want you to write a little note that you forgive your parents for this message and for giving this message to you. And I want you to think about what you want to believe about money. What are the positive beliefs? Write down three to five positive beliefs that you want to believe about money rather than you can't afford it, which I advise you never to say, or that money doesn't grow on trees, which kind of doesn't even like make sense. (laughs) Um, That you're not made of money, that you're not rich. I want you to turn those phrases around and maybe have some positive things like, Money has value and is important to me. Money comes to me easily and effortlessly. Or how about, I enjoy making money. Money is good. Money helps me afford things that I want and help the people that I love. I attract money easily and am a good steward of money. Just write down some beliefs that you'd like to say and believe and change from your childhood, because there's probably some in there in your subconscious that you're not even aware of. They're just deeply buried in there. So try to become conscious, try to move them up to your consciousness. 
and if you can, rephrase those, and it helps to repeat them quite frequently so that you can get a new belief system. It's just like advertising over and over and over changes your belief system. So say them frequently and you will have a new outlook on money. By the way, this was one of the posts that I made on Instagram. If you want little more tidbits of things you can do on a regular basis, follow me on Instagram at Linda P. Jones and be wealthy and smart. Have you heard I'm having a summer giveaway? Now through the end of September, you could win six awesome prizes. My Wealthy Mindset Blueprint audio course, where you learn how millionaires think the right thoughts for wealth before it happens, valued at $197, or a wealth journal, where you learn my six steps to wealth and have the wealth mini course, valued at $67. Here's what you need to do. Just leave a review for Be Wealthy and Smart on iTunes if you're on an iPhone, Or if you're on an Android, go to Stitcher Radio, S-T-I-T-C-H-E-R, radio.com, and leave a review. Like my Facebook fan page at facebook.com forward slash Linda P. Jones fan page. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Linda P. Jones. And then send me an email and let me know you did it at lpjhome at gmail.com. All names will be dropped in a hat and a drawing will be done in early October for winners. And if you're looking to get to financial freedom sooner, get my 11 quick financial tips to boost your wealth. There are 11 quick things anyone can do to get on the path to financial freedom faster. It's at lindapjones.com. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.